DeWitt Grosbeck spoke with Adam Himmelsbach on the state of the team and touched on the Brad Stevens roster construction, saying he has constructed two teams that went really far and had really exciting possibilities. Even though neither team won the championship, they were playing at a high level, but he had to really double down on his work this offseason, thinking about how to get bigger and better. The couple of moves he made with uh, Porzingis coming, uh, Braz had, uh, has really redoubled his efforts to think through this roster. My partners and I made it very clear to Brad that the entire goal is to win a championship, if not uh, more than one. Grossbeck added this about the team's spending. The league doesn't allow us to comment on the details of the CBA, but having said that, we're obviously all in with the record contract for Jalen Brown and with our payroll this year and in coming years. Eventually, there are basketball penalties for spending, so that will go into the thought process down the road. But at the moment, the best basketball thing we can do is what we're doing. Chris, how'd you read those comments? Yeah, I thought first, you know, the comments were interesting in that I, I thought that, it, to me, it seemed like Wick might have been one of the driving forces of some of the roster changes that were made this offseason. Sort of an idea coming from ownership that we can't just run it back and expect to finally hoist banner 18 and they obviously made significant change and Marcus Smart going out and Chris Stapps Porzingis going in it seemed like there was some discussion judging by Adam's story between Wick Grousebeck and Brad Stevens and Joe Missoula about having to change the complexion of the roster and do you guys remember obviously I think it was after game three down in Miami there was a report that there was you know discussion between people well, in ownership and ownership yeah, and players yeah, and yeah, yeah. after the game about you know maybe trying to show a little more resolve so I wonder if that sort of went into it and then the other thing I'd say you know he's talking about basketball penalties and I know what he means you, you get to a certain point in the apron where if you make a trade it has to be a dollar for dollar thing you don't have a lot of flexibility and then you're, there's repeater the repeater yes penalties, your pick right? can be affected but I also looked at that and said their window is is narrow here yep You're like they're not going to be able to carry Porzingis and the Jays for very long so they really have to take advantage of that maybe in the next two years max yeah well yeah I think it's one to two years but you shouldn't even be looking at as two years you should be looking at it as they are the favorites next year them along with the Denver Nuggets I mean that's the way it should have been treated going into last year right they were the favorites for most of the season to win the NBA title and I think that is the way they they think as well but there's there's extra pressure now because there really is only it feels like two years. The CBA change is huge yeah. for them, especially with Jason Tatum. Uh, he's going to be ready for a, a super max going up in a couple of years. So you keep hearing the size thing. Are they right to you know put as much emphasis on the size of Porzingis? Does he play enough like a big guy to be considered a big guy? Uh, I mean, in today's NBA, I'll say yes. I mean, I traditionally. You would say no. He's gotten much better defensively. He does a better job rim protection, better job with defensive effort. But let's be honest. I mean, he's an offensive player. That's why he's here. And, you know, he's here for his offense. So, and to be a better third option than what they've had, which has been Marcus Smart. And that's where they really needed to upgrade, and they knew it. We need a better third option. Okay. At, again, it's going to be at the expense of defense if they let go of too much of that rope. Well, if you listen to the players last year, the feeling – was yes, they had let go of too much of that rope. But to me, as long as they have Robert Williams, and if you can get, you know, I thought Tatum was pretty good defensively last year. Jalen Brown, I thought, was pretty good defensively last year. If you can sort of redouble that commitment as a team, then I think you can strike the right balance overall. Uh, what's most interesting to me about this, and I know Wick said he was going to be at Smart's wedding, and I'm not saying Wick said to trade Smart. I don't think he did. But just the fans are sort of like, why would you move on from this guy? We could have gotten it done if we ran it back. The organization, it seems like even at the highest levels, didn't feel that way. That running it back was not the best option. Why? Because they'd seen it fail. They, and when I say fail, I mean not win a championship. Yeah. You know, because he said they're in win now mode. I think they'd seen it fail two years in a row when they got to the most intense crucible and they were faced with that. And not just fail on the court, but fail from a personality, comportment, response, resolve standpoint. And when they looked at all of that, I think, okay, we have to change this mix, not just from a basketball standpoint, but from a makeup standpoint. Are they better now? You think they're better, Joe? I do. I do. I know that other people have been on record saying that they think that uh, giving up Marcus Smart, Grant Williams, that they're not going to be as tough. I think that they're better. But it also depends on how your, your best players respond to that. It depends on how Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown respond to needing to be kind of those toughness leaders in yeah. addition to just being the leaders. They need to, they need to be the guys that, that lead the way by playing tough throughout the season. So, And I think clearing Marcus Smart out of there gives him the chance. It creates the room for them to fill that void and grow into that last piece of the puzzle, which is the metal and the toughness, mental and physical and all of that. I think Smart did get in the way of that. And so now it's their team and there's no – there's no interference between them and the, the top of the team. If, if Lillard goes to Miami, 
Who's the favorite in the East next year? Oh, Celtics. It's still the Celtics. Oh, Gasper. I, I would say Miami. Uh, Miami would be, I mean, Miami would be the favorite for me just in a one year scenario. And I, here's what I say from a pure talent standpoint. Yes, I see what you're saying, Giles, but I think you have to factor in the way Miami has played against the Celtics when they've had less talent than the Celtics. Now I would feel like, yeah, Celtics are probably still more talented, but the gap would be really close and Miami sort of has their number. The weird part about that series, though, was it was it was all the it was the Gabe Vincent. Yeah, it Max Strews, Martins, yeah. Max Strews, those Duncan were, Robinson. Those were the guys that killed him in that series. That's true. So it's a fair point. They're, they're not going to get the opportunities with with Damian Lillard on the floor. It's, it's going to look different.